What's up, Mob? Hey, how we doing? So, bad news, Aaron Plessinger is done for the season. Some weird stuff's going around at Triumph. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, I'm going to get into a little bit of that. And Evan Ferry. Boy, there's a lot of bridges being burned there. Remember, guys, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's going great, and I'm going to just keep on cranking these videos out. But if you subscribe, it definitely helps the algorithm. So, let's get into this. You need people like me so you can point your fingers I say that's the bad guy so the people's champion Aaron Plessinger dang I mean he missed last week with the elbow injury that we knew he hurt in practice but it didn't sound that bad the way they were describing it I was hoping he'd be back for the final four rounds of Supercross unfortunately it sounds like he chipped the bone he didn't dislocate his elbow but he chipped the bone and he's going to take the rest of the supercross season and he's just going to he's going to scrap the last four rounds get ready for outdoors and with the grind these guys have let's not forget they they go through the entire supercross season they get like one or two weeks off then they do the entire outdoor season and then they go right into super motocross uh playoffs yeah i hate playing them it's it's race offs or the finals whatever you want to call it but they go right into that. So there's a lot of seasons still to go. I think it's a smart move for Aaron to take these races off. He's not in contention for a championship. He got his first win of the year at San Diego. He got that monkey off his back. And now he can focus on outdoors. And he's a former outdoor champion. So don't sleep on him outdoors. He's going to be up there and battling, especially if he gets this extra time to kind of rest up, heal up, and test the bike. Speaking of outdoors, guys sweat a ton. And if you want an energy drink based on your sweat rate, hit up Complete Racing Solutions. They've got the energy fuel and they'll get you a specific formula based on your sweat rate. So hit up CompleteRacingSolutions.com, get your energy fuel. Epic Garage Designs, some of the coolest stuff you could ever do in a garage. They've partnered with A1 Garage here in Las Vegas, sponsoring the Las Vegas Golden Knights, and they are giving away a garage makeover. If you live in Las Vegas, go to A1 Garage and enter to win the garage makeover. You won't be disappointed. So I'm hearing some weird things around the Triumph team. I reached out to Bobby Hewitt, and he didn't seem to know anything about what I was hearing. And whatever's going on, I can tell you this, Bobby Hewitt's not involved, but... Evan Ferry seems to be missing in action. Let's get into Evan Ferry right off the bat. Evan Ferry, one of the most talked about amateur racers, but he's, gosh dang, he has dug himself a career hole that I just don't see him getting out of. He is literally the, the story of what not to do as an amateur racer. The stories behind the scenes of him burning bridges. I think him and his dad burned more bridges than there are bridges. And they ran out of people to go to to get support and it's not like this kid is a can't miss pro his only real success that i that i can remember i'm sure he's had other successes but the only one i really remember is 2019 when he was rockstar husqvarna on the super mini and he won the monster cup that was a great race that was awesome he's he looked like such a humble kid i got to meet him that night and i was like wow the future's bright for him but from there he leaves rockstar goes to yamaha multiple different Yamaha teams, and then you're hearing all this crazy stuff behind the scenes about them burning bridges and using people. And I don't know how many of these stories are true, but if there's that much smoke, there's got to be a little bit fire. Now I'm hearing that he might not even return to the Triumph team, that they've maybe burned that bridge. I know he got hurt at that first round, but supposedly he was going to be back in just a couple weeks and we have not seen him. And Triumph is a good team. That's a good bike. It looks really good in the MXGPs. And Jalik Swole looks badass on that thing. And I honestly think maybe since there's two east-west out of the three rounds, I don't know if he's going to get a podium. But that bike is 100% competitive. And for a first year out in the 250 class, that's almost unheard of. I'm excited to see what Jalik will do on that bike outdoors. And man, I'll tell you what, if I'm the Ferry family... I don't know what you do, but you go back there with your tail between your legs and you say, I'm sorry, and you get back on that bike and you ride and they say jump, you say how high, because it's not like he's Jet Lawrence. He doesn't have people courting him and that's kind of how they act or, or what I've been told that they act like. <clears throat> I'm hearing Triumph's budget isn't what they had hoped it was going to be. And 
While Bobby Hewitt did not, he actually denied any of this. And like I said, if it's anything going on, I am about 99.99% sure Bobby Hewitt is not involved. But the rumors I'm hearing are allegedly a brand ambassador. You guys know who I might be talking about. You know, remember when we talked about the reason I say this is supposedly this brand ambassador has been sending invoices to Triumph. They've got a certain amount of budget for the race team and ambassadors, and they've been billing. So this ambassador allegedly has been working with friends of his in the industry to overbill and split the money in between the two. This is, unfortunately, this is a very common practice in this industry, and I don't know why people just accept that it happens. But if I'm Triumph and you're dealing with this ambassador, you know, the one I'm talking about, you're probably your most famous one. Uh, you might want to double check those invoices that he has submitted when he's dealing with track builds, equipment rentals. Just take a look at it, guys. I'm not saying it's happening, but a lot of people are saying that that's happening. If this is true, it is disgusting that somebody who has got so much from the sport would treat it with such disrespect. It's disgusting to me. I actually really hope it's not true. Because if it is, like, man, that, I, I, I just can't imagine somebody who got their whole life from it would come back and do that to the sport and teams who put all their money into the teams. Teams are how riders get rich because there's no purse money or there's very, very little purse money. Super Motocross has a little bit, but guys cannot survive off the purse money. It's these teams that pay the riders, the brands that pay the riders. Last thing you want to do is go rip one of them off. Guys, check out Ride Strapped. Uh, you get your goggles, glasses, shirts, and if you're at Paula, the National, come find us. We're going to camp out. Christmas Strapped is, you know, doing one of his adventures. We might do a cookout. We're trying to figure out the logistics on that. And if, you know, I don't want to get in too much trouble with Sports. I'm trying to play a little bit nice, but they're not going to be real happy having a cooksy cookout at their race. If you're shipping anything, use Precision Transport, a family-owned, family-run company that values customer service, good pricing, Club MX used them and said it was way less money than the other quotes that they had got. So check out pretransport.com. So we've got the big East-West shootout this weekend between you know the East 250 riders and the West 250 riders, and we get to see the best of the best go at it. But there's a storyline between Levi Kitchen and Hayden Deegan. Levi left that star racing Yamaha team and he never actually said it exactly. I don't think I've ever seen him quote exactly that he didn't want to be around the Deegan circus, but that's the rumor that's out there. That's what everybody's saying is he didn't like having the Deegan cameras and circus all around him. And he needed a break from that because going to the pro circuit team, that's a, that's not a team where you go, where you don't have to work as hard. Mitch, works those guys hard and he expects nothing but the best out of his riders so he's not going there for the easy route it has to be the deegan thing and now does that piss off deegan you damn well right it does and now you know they're kind of the two levi's the top guy in the west and hayden's right there on the east what happens we know hayden's not scared to let people have it and you know is he gonna let him have it is he gonna slam him they're gonna see each other all outdoors too so you know do you want to make an enemy this early It'll be something to watch this weekend when you see Levi Kitchen and Hayden Deegan, if they come near each other on the track or if they're battling for a win. And keep in mind, Hayden needs to win more than Levi does right now. He is in a, you know, a situation where he needs to gain some points. He can't afford to settle into second behind Levi Kitchen. So he's going to give it everything. And if he has to take out Levi, he absolutely will. So that's something to watch this weekend. I cannot wait to see those two go head to head. Speaking of head to head battles, we've got the old Wiley veteran in Cooper Webb, who's tough as nails, tough as a $2 steak, as Larry Huffman would say. This guy finds a way to win. He always just, he's never the fastest guy. He's never the smoothest guy. He just, he wins on sheer grit and toughness. Now they're straight up tied, two red plates, four rounds to go. Who will win, the young lion or the old veteran? I don't know, man. It's a coin flip in my opinion. Uh, the other day I said that, you know, Cooper's kind of the favorite, but I don't know that he is. It's, Jet has that speed. If Jet goes on a run and uses that talent, because, you know, he can out-talent Cooper anytime. If he can up his toughness and smarts and ride with a, you know, and, and eliminate these mistakes, I think it's Jets to win. 
But Cooper has a way of just getting in these guys' head. Ask some of the guys that have gone head-to-head -head with him. Ask Roxon. Roxon probably has nightmares about Cooper Webb. And who would have ever said that Ken Roxon would get whipped by Cooper Webb in 2016? Nobody. It wasn't even a, it wasn't even a fair argument. Meanwhile, the next few years, Cooper just ruined his life for like, I mean, he beat him every single, how many times did he catch and pass Roxon just on pure grit? That's what Cooper does. And I'm excited to see how that plays out in these next four rounds. Chase Sexton looks to be finding the speed. The merchant of speed has been sending it. He looked like he recovered some after the break. I don't know if he fixed the bike, fixed his mentality, whatever it is. He's 15 points behind. Kind of the, the, almost the exact same situation he was in last year. I do not see him getting a gift. Last year, he got kind of a gift, but he also put himself in that situation. So he earned that title. He didn't, his title was not handed to him. A lot of people said that. I disagree with that. I 100% believe he earned the title last year, but he's going to have to gain points on both Webb and Jet at Nashville to really get himself, insert himself into this mix and make it a three rider battle instead of a two rider battle for that championship. Thanks guys, I appreciate everything. And if you like what I do, head on over to the Cooksey Media MMA channel. I've got some UFC stuff. I got some big things happening over there. Uh, I'll be going behind the scenes with the fighter here locally, Justin Janes, and kind of watching him prep for his tough enough fight and some other cool stuff. I'll be doing a show with Red Pill MMA. If you guys follow MMA, you know who that is. He's pretty big. I reached out to him. We're gonna do a show together and just, yeah, we'll live stream it and talk about some of the issues. So thanks guys, and I will catch you later.